What's up guys, Quezzy or Noah here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this liquid GUI text in Cinema 4D. And you will not need any plugins or anything like that. Um, you just will need the latest version of Cinema 4D. Um, I think at, at least R20 I know for sure. Um, you might be able to do it with 18 and 19, but I, I, I'm pretty sure it's 20. I'll look into it and make a comment um, to confirm that. But basically we're going to be using some new Cinema 4D um, features to create this effect. And you can do it with text or objects. Um, it's up to you. I'm going to be showing you how to do it with text because it's a little different than, you, than doing it with objects. With objects you have more leeway to do different things because it will look good. Text you still have to keep it somewhat legible. Before we get started, I want to mention two things real fast. One is I'm using my own personal Lightroom, which is in my store if you're interested. It's like a little over a dollar. Or I'd recommend just using any Lightroom you have or Googling one, YouTubing one if you don't feel like paying a dollar. Um, just to get some sort of lights. Or you can just create your own lights as you go if you're comfortable with that. Also, I want to recommend checking out my Skillshare account. I have three classes there right now that are actually really interesting and pretty in-depth. And there's a ton of tutorials on Skillshare that I use every day. I've been using it for about four months now. And every day I go there to learn something. And if you click my link, you can get two months free. You have to plug in credit card information or some sort of payment. But if you cancel before the two months, you'll never be charged. So it's a free two months to learn some things that you wouldn't see on YouTube. Uh, or anywhere else. It's really nice and they have classes from graphic design to web design to marketing, a bunch of good stuff. Um, so check out my link in the description if that interests you. But anyway, let's just go ahead and get started. So first things first, I'm going to go to MoGraph Mo Text. I'm going to go to Align, Align Middle, and I'm going to type in my text. I'm going to type in Venom because I think that's a fitting um, word for something like this. Uh, the superhero kind of has that gooey look. On depth, we're going to go 75. Subdivision, we're going to do 15. And we're going to go with a pretty easy to read font. I'm going to use Gotham Black. You can use any font you'd like. Um, but you may have to change your settings depending on the font. So there's Gotham Black. And you might have to change the subdivision depending on how your font is and the depth, etc. Also depending on how big your Lightroom is and a bunch of features, but um, basically you want to create something like this. And I'm going to tilt my camera up slightly so that grid's not in the way. Cool. Now we want to go to caps, fill it cap for each of these. And set the radius to one on both of them. Go down and check create single object. On type, go triangles and check regular grid and 10. You can see I have my lines on. If you go to display and shading lines, you can see that. If you want to turn that off though, just go to shading and you get something like this. Now let's go to MoGraph Effector Random and we're just going to kind of tilt the text. So on position here in the parameter, we're going to go X, 11, and then 7 on both of the other two. And then we're going to check rotation go negative 36, negative 26, and 2. And that creates some interesting tilted text. Now we're going to go to the first feature of the new Cinema 4D, which is MoGraph Voronoi Fracture. I have a couple of tutorials using this, and it's really awesome. So if you're interested in seeing more with this, uh, I'll link a tutorial down below. Um, but we're going to go ahead and add the Motex to the Voronoi Fracture, and you can see it fractures our text for us. Now make sure you click Voronoi Fracture and go to Object, and now we're going to play with some of these settings. So on Offset Fragments, we want to set that to 5 centimeters, which will space out our fragments, or give it a gap rather. And then we want to check Hole Only and set the thickness to 3. Down below is scale cells, and it might be hidden for you, so just click on it to bring up these three options. And on the top one, you just want to add a zero to make it 10, and that will stretch it um, horizontally, like so. And then while the Voronoi fracture is selected, um, we want to go to MoGraph Effector Random. Um, once again, using it, this time we're only going to be using the Position tab in Parameter. 
Um, so on X, we're gonna do negative nine, and then Y five, and then eight for Z. And that spaces it out. If it's a little too much for your text and you can't read it, you might have to bring down some of those settings. So I might bump down a couple of those because the end's getting a little wonky. Now we want to get into the cool feature, which is part of the volume tab. And we want to get a volume builder. And at the same time, go ahead and get the volume measure. Put the builder inside of the measure and put the Voronoi fracture inside of the builder. Now I like to take that measure then and put it in between both my random effectors so I know the bottom one is for the text and the top one is for the Voronoi fracture in case I want to edit those settings later. If we go to volume builder then we want to mess with some of these settings because right now it's a whole lot of nothing. So uh, it should say signed distance field and voxel size which we want to make that size 1. Once you make that one, you want to go down and click this button that says reshape layer and then click smooth layer right next to it. So it should be smooth layer, reshape layer, and then your Voronoi fracture. If you click the smooth layer, you should get settings down below on a tab called filter. On that, you want to set the iterations to three. And at this point, you'll notice that loading times for everything will become very slow, um, especially depending on your computer. And you will have a calculating thing down here at the bottom left. So we might have to be patient here. I'm gonna have to speed up a couple parts here. Um, but you can see it just loaded and this is what we have. So it's not exactly looking like what we want, but if we go to the Voronoi fracture, then you'll also see we have an option to use mesh points and we wanna check that. And we want to make the radius 2. If I let that calculate, you'll see we get a gooey effect to our text. And there it is. And you'll notice letters blend into each other. So it just, it has a cool look. And the coolest thing about this is we can keep adding different objects to the text to give it our desired effect. So for example, if I go and I'm gonna actually uncheck the measure and the builder so they're invisible right now and that way um, Cinema 40 won't have to calculate it constantly and take forever but if I go to objects and add a sphere and let me bring that over decrease the size um, let me find a place that it would fit okay so say I want it right in the O here if I do that and I drag that into the volume builder, click the volume builder, um, make it visible and make the mesher visible and you'll see a sphere now pops up. Now it is above the smooth layer and the reshape layer, which we don't want. So we're going to click it and drag it below those two and we're going to make sure it's with a union. And once again, I'm going to let this calculate. And you can see it just blends in with it. Uh, maybe I have to move it over slightly to be able to see it. You'll notice if I try to move it with the measure and builder checked, it will keep trying to calculate and will take forever. So I have to hide these real quick to kind of move it over further. And there it is. You can see it is blended in now with the text. So you could add as much as you want you could add those spheres to the bottom of the text to create a dripping effect um, or do a whole bunch of things. You could also, in the volume builder, come here and set it to subtract or intersect. Um, subtract will um, delete whatever the, uh, whatever the sphere interacts with and um, intersect will just keep the points that it obviously intersects with. And add just adds the sphere or union adds the sphere to the whole. Now you can see it takes a lot of loading time to add those spheres in so I'm going to only add that one and hopefully you guys can run with it and add as much as you want. Again make sure the builder and measure are unchecked when you're adding them so it doesn't slow down too much. Now we want to go ahead and create the materials. 
So I created three different materials for mine and created three different meshers. Obviously you can see the builder and meshers take up a lot of like calculating and time. So I'm gonna wait to duplicate them till the end and I'm gonna show you how to make the materials now. Um, so hopefully that works out a little better. But we're gonna come down here and create a new material. Double click on it to our settings. We're gonna go to color and we're gonna go to this drop down arrow next to texture and go to layer and click the black square. We're gonna go to shader and gradient. We're gonna click the gradient, keep it 2D to you and we're gonna just pick two colors in the same family but are slightly different. So I'm gonna pick a green first and I have my hex codes written down so I'm just gonna add it to 5D 94F is the first green. Okay, and then the second green is F7 FF57. And actually it's more of a yellow, but it works with the green, obviously. And then I'm going to hit the up arrow to go back, and I'm going to go to effect and distort. I'm going to keep it on noise and bump up the strength to 50%. And that kind of blends the green and yellow together a little more and I just think it makes the texture a little more interesting. Um, you could leave it there. I added a um, reflectance to it so if we go to reflectance make sure it's checked and the default specular I'm gonna go ahead and remove and I'm gonna click add and we're gonna do a reflection legacy and set the opacity to 16. <laughs> Now what we want to do is go to the material and command C, command V to duplicate it. Double click on it, go do the color, the gradient, and we're going to change the color of the gradient. This one's going to be blue and I'm going to do the hex 2555D9. And the second one is 57E3FF. And then if we duplicate it a third time, we're just gonna make a couple different white. So we can actually just go to the um, HSV tab and decrease it to about 1% there. And either 1% or 0% there. So it's basically a white and then boom, we're done. And you could do different colors instead of green and blue. Um, for Venom, actually, I think black would be pretty sweet. So let me make a black one. There we go. So for this, I think black would look really sweet. And I'm going to add that on and just render this out for you real fast. There we go, the reflectance on this one looks a bit off, so I'm gonna bump it down a lot. Maybe just one, uh, because it is a black material. It's probably not gonna look as good. But there we go, I think that's a lot better with the subtler reflectance. That's sort of fitting for Venom, kinda like that. But now if we want to add more colors, the way I went about doing it is selecting um, from random to random. So we select everything but the camera and lighting. Right click and group objects. Now I'm going to open that null and I'm going to uncheck volume measure and volume builder just so this doesn't take forever. And I'm going to duplicate the null once and twice. Now I'm going to minimize all three and open up the middle one. And on this middle one, I'm gonna to go to the Voronoi Fracture, and on Offset Fragments, I'm gonna set that to 15 instead of five. 
and you can see the pieces that are highlighted are now a lot smaller which is what we want and I'm gonna go to the bottom random and I'm gonna set the first rotation setting uh, I'm gonna add 10 or I'm gonna actually subtract 10 to make it 46 so it gets a little different rotation and then we can minimize that one and then open the top one and all we're gonna do for that one is go to that same random the bottom random and set it to negative 26 instead of 36 so we get another different random now if I open all of these up and we can go ahead and change the colors of the other two so we'll make that one white and we'll go green for the last one and now let's recheck the volume measure and wait a little bit to see what we get also in the other two you could just delete the spheres they're kind of not needed you can move them around or something I'm just gonna leave them for tutorial purposes and there is our text now you can see it blends that color those three colors real nicely and if I render this out I think this will look actually really sweet now there's a big gap in the end for some reason I think that's just how the Voronoi fracture worked out so um, I'd probably have to play around with that to get that to look a little better but if you take this over to Photoshop now and use a little bit of liquify you can get a really great look and obviously if you play around with some materials you can get a lot of different styles with this effect and I think it looks really nice and I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial if you did please leave a like on the video subscribe for more tutorials let me know what else you'd like to see in Cinema 4D or Photoshop or whatever if you like what you see from my channel check out my patreon they get all the downloadable goods from these tutorials including this um, file right here as well as everything in my store depending on what tier you're at and they get videos early um, there's a lot of great stuff so check that out also follow me on twitter at quezzy check out my store for all my designing goods and i hope to see you in the next tutorial peace